Hey everyone, this is Jaxi, and today we're going to get excited about history with Let's Play Decisive Campaigns, Case Yellow. So the Netherlands is out. They lasted longer than historically, but they are done. We have good weather. Our command and control is great. Um, French losses are almost at 10%. The Belgians are over a quarter, and the Dutch are done fantastic result i do give them props for doing better than history but again i'm holding on to my paratroopers so i am not worried beginning here we're just kind of taking stock because we have a lot of army group b freed up and so ninth panzer is going to wheel around real quickly and start trying to put pressure on the belgians I know it's going to be really, really ungangly at first, but like 26 core, I want to get them all moved down and support 9th Panzer. I want to get all my reserve infantry divisions up. I think these units could be somewhat decisive in a little bit, but then again, you know, we are trying the push for the sea. We are doing the historical attack there. But just like history, Army Group B is going to surprise people. They're going to do better than they should. And this will be a big boost for them, freeing up 18th Army over here. I'm also going to be able to get a lot of these SS motorized divisions. They do have a long way to go. For now, I think I'm just going to have them hoof it. You do get some strategic redeployment, but one of the problems with that is, you know, to simulate the units getting on trains and then going to where they're supposed to go and then they have to get reformed when they get there, doing any sort of strategic redeployment will kill a unit's readiness. And at this point, even if it's going to take two or three turns, I want the SS showing up 100% ready to fight. And they should be able to smash into the Belgians. And really, I think by now, by the 15th, the British and the French should be showing up at the deal line and in bigger and more impressive numbers. Now, even though I'm going to schleif in them, I think I have just enough mobile units that I can be cutting off some British and French units. And remember, I know it's been a little while, but I want to make sure I keep explaining. When you cut off enough units and they cannot trace a route back to Paris, that has a chance for triggering a morale drop for the overall um, enemy kind of side so the different factions they have national morales and the dutch and the belgians start pretty low france is a little higher britain is higher still but that'll drop if you are encircling units and even before we make it to the sea we should be able to eat into that i'm pretty excited about the prospect of whittling them down and making them less and less effective and more and more likely to capitulate. I don't know when we're going to get the French to capitulate, and Britain is probably going to hold on longer than we think, but if I can get the Belgians out soon and reduce their will to fight for the British and the French, and yep, there's the British showing up along the deal line, getting into 9th Corps here and 6th Army, we're going to start seeing some units, and the British don't bring a lot to the table as far as numbers, but we're going to have some mobile units, and they are going to be harder to encircle. They're going to fight better than the Dutch and the Belgians, and yeah, it's going to be real. You'll also notice a lot of those third motorized units. They're smart, and they're setting up in heavy forest. They know that the Luftwaffe and the artillery is going to have a harder time getting to them. If you're playing multiplayer, I mean, you really have to be deliberate about where you set up because the Germans will pick you apart with artillery and air power anywhere in the open field, and you just absolutely cannot hack it. You can think you have a really strong defensive line, but I'll tell you, having played this game in a lot of multiplayer, you don't. And so here, I'm kind of scouting forward. 9th Corps got a little mixed up with 11th Corps. Um, I don't know about you guys, but this happens to me a lot. I do pretty well in these games, but uh, not a lot of artillery there. 
I do sometimes mix my units and I don't have these beautiful cores and armies because I get so caught up in an advance, I don't want to slow them down and reorganize. And then sometimes when it gets to be such a mess, I will have to. But if you guys remember my case white game, and I'll put a card here with that popping up, that it never really bit me. Um, I've played multiplayer games where every person controls a different army, and it really bothers some of the people on my own side. And then... I still do okay, so it's just a personal preference thing. Reminder, when you attack, units will get divisional bonus, and then a lower core bonus, and then a lower um, army bonus. So you can have them moving and mixing up on the field, it just doesn't look pretty. When you attack, you want to try to get units as coherent as possible, because it will give them little little bonuses and right here they have a reserve unit pound it with artillery 300 men i will take it they're in the open field though i'm gonna try to push them with 14th infantry unfortunately they won't have full movement they're not gonna have much at all but i'm hoping open fields german infantry against uh belgian second line troops maybe we will get lucky and we don't. They take way more casualties than we do, but it's not enough. I would like to get some of these units out of there so that I can free 3rd Panzer, but unfortunately, we're just going to have to hit them with 3rd Panzer, make our own luck. And they panic. They almost get destroyed. I get another mini encirclement. They've actually been pretty good about finding little holes in my units. I almost have to have a continuous line for some of these encirclements. And... So I do have to watch for things like that, but we get some openings and so far so good. We're just going to pound them anywhere we have open fields with basically anything we have. 400 casualties, some support units. I will definitely take that result anytime, but 11th core kind of bludgeoning. Brussels is real close and it's a lot of victory points plus I'm hoping if I can start eating away at that then the Belgians will be out and that would really leave the French and the British with some big gaps in the line you'll notice that the French and British even though I don't have perfect recon they are relying on the Belgians to hold the gap in between unfortunately for them um, that nice mixture of Two, I know, two cores. I had to do it. It kind of came down to what units had movement points and what did not. But the attack worked. And so right now, yeah, we're just going to have this nasty little mix of first core, fourth core, and 11th. But I'm going to do what I can. I'm holding that attack there. I kind of want to do some rear guard units. You'll notice when I started this campaign off, I was really organized in moving like north to south and army group B to army group A, but because of the I go, you go and the way zone of control works, I really, as the campaign gets more complicated and the moves really start to matter, I have to bounce back and forth because sometimes I need time to think, sometimes I just need to see how other things play out while I make decisions. I have a lot of units stacked up here kind of waiting for a breakout. Even though it looks like I've got the Belgians encircled, if I'm not at least somewhat mindful of which units I'm using for mop-up duty, then I will either waste movement points if I'm too busy navigating pockets I've already sealed, or I will waste attacks destroying units that are basically written off when I could be pushing forward. So I think I'm going to try to use first core as much as I can for mopping up, and then I'm going to let fourth and eleventh kind of push forward and be a little more useful if i can get some good artillery here i can start closing this pocket it's not quite ready to like go into the cities and whatnot but 
in the open fields, I can start this process. Uh, not a lot of regular casualties, but it took some machine gun losses. Could have been worse. 223rd, let's see, reserves against reserves. 400 men, not ideal, but hey, pushed them back. Heavy losses. And I don't want to take Diest, Diest. I'm going to assume Diest with the Belgian pronunciation, but feel free in the comments to correct me. I do always appreciate the pronunciation guides for anything that's not German. Although, if I do mess up something German, like, please let me know because I'm supposed to know that one. The artillery, not a lot of movement points, but able to destroy it, wonderful. And that pocket is pretty close to done. First core, you have done well. You've freed up some of the other units. And now fourth core should be able to get a move on. I think I'm just going to consolidate here with 18th Infantry. And let the Panzers and some of my further infantry start scouting forward. I know it's already May 15th, but... I'm not in any rush, especially with Army Group B, so I just want to see things play out. I don't want to get hasty and get way too mixed up. I already have three core here kind of bottlenecking, but I'm real close to a breakthrough on the deal. I just have to kind of see where these attacks lead. All right, can I get a big concentric after some artillery? Let's find out. Maybe like first infantry? Yeah, we'll try that. See, 1st and 18th. Uh, I don't want to use 18th if I don't have to. Let's... I'm going to lose a lot of concentric. But I kind of want to save them and their integrity. See if I can just do this with the 1st. And I do. They take some losses, but knocks that pocket out. Saves 4th core. Um... If you're even if you're having successful attacks, I mean if you're taking casualties, you're gonna lose some readiness. You'll gain some morale and some experience, but you will lose some readiness and lose some operational integrity. And I just don't want that when they might have to bludgeon their way through the French. That first motorized there right on the deal is kinda looking at me. That's why I'm really bouncing back and forth. I wanna figure out what my plan is. I think I'm gonna have 7th, see if they can push these units. They destroy the rest of that reserve corps, or reserve uh, regiment, excuse me, but unfortunately they can't get the artillery. Not ideal, I'm not very happy about that, but hey, we're still moving forward. I am very confident that, decisive factor or not, that my boys in Army Group B are looking out. Unfortunately, that Cavalry Brigade, that's going to lock down 20th Motorized. That's a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, I don't know if I want 18th Infantry to mess with it just yet. So I think I'll give it a turn, and then um, hopefully they'll have rotted in the pocket long enough. Maybe I can kill this HQ, and even though it's pocketed, like it should not be able to get supplies or decent bonuses to anything within but might be worth attacking it and maybe not i don't know i'll hold off let's see what else we have one of the issues with boxing units up like this is you'll notice i do have to click back and forth on things a lot and see are there any units hiding underneath now there are views where you can have units unstack that messes with me. I just never use it. I know some players who do. I know some players who do the case blue where they'll have like six to eight Russian units on a tile and they do that. I just click through the stacks. I take a look that way. Maybe cumbersome, but it's how I've always played. And so far, case white went well and this scenario is going well too. I have third panzer. I think I've got that all straightened out now. I definitely know I don't want to attack through the city or the marshes. And unfortunately, 
They do have some field hexes up there, but the southernmost, the first regiment of the first motorized French, they do sit on some really good entrenchment. So let's do some pocket cleanup. I got to think about that. It might just be easier if I can get good recon to throw the panzers over the river and then attack next turn. Or I might want to shift the panzers to a field hex. When I'm attempting the river crossing, that might work too. These guys are in forts, but man, they've been sitting in this pocket for a good couple turns. Once I don't unnecessarily overstack. Let's see, who do I want? Oh, yeah, the 211th has had it a little more rough. So I'm going to get rid of some of them. Not all, unfortunately, because I want my concentric, but... Let's get rid of some and see. Oh, 100 men lived. Couldn't fully take it, but uh, two victory points. And that should open up a lot of bridge options, which should help our supply situation as we get a little further. This scenario, once the dash to the sea is on, it gets rough. And you want all these bridges repaired. First campaign I played, I know I talk about this a lot, but didn't. Do the little steps like that. I got so excited that the engineers were mobilized or motorized and they go so far. I just wanted to throw them forward all the time. Zero casualties and took two counters off the board. I will take that result all day, every day. But uh, yeah, I didn't do the little steps. And I still use engineers sometimes for an attack or an encirclement, but really... Building bridges, probably their most useful function is the Germans. As the allies, you want any unit you can near bridges just trying to blow them. And often, if you are the allied Belgian or Dutch player, you'll have screening units on bridges. And then your first turn is just mashing the bridge explode button until you run out of action points. And it is a die roll. And it can get harrowing and really frustrating if it doesn't happen. So I'm going to do some scouting here. I kind of, I'm a little frustrated. It's the 15th and I'm still kind of on the muse and it's annoying me. So I want to see what they have in depth. I don't know if I could get any encirclements or I'm going to have to fight my way through. The French are going to sit in these forest hexes. And they're going to meet me in the east and not in the west, which makes sense. They want to be in those forest hexes. Even if I will eventually win or eventually encircle them, it is the smart play. I think 8th Corps, I might actually be able to fight my way through some of those units. And 4th uh, Army can just kind of go straight west. I'm wondering if that will work out for me and if i can do that and open up the front a little bit south of namur then that will make my dash to the sea easier while i still finish up around sedal right here i don't know i think with artillery and air support there are so many fields here i don't want to attack right around namur because they do simulate that is it was a fortress city and it is ringed with entrenchments and things of that sort. And fortress hexes and whatnot. I don't want to play with that. But here in the open field, like... Uh, 200 casualties. Right as I'm talking about open field. Come on, German artillery. You can do it. Let's see if we get a better result. There we go. I actually kill some men and blow up some tanks. And their readiness is down to 31. I don't have perfect um, perfect scouting, but 100 casualties. I don't kill a ton of their tanks, but I do push the unit back, which is nice. So they're light tank units and they're mech units, and I actually destroy one. So right there, removed a French counter. They were at 8%, but we are getting some work done. I don't want to try to encircle them and let that unit get pinched off until I can move up some others. But, oh, if I can just remove these French counters, then they're going to have nothing to stop me. 
I'm relying on my infantry a lot more this game. I'm trying to be better about attacking and not just completely bypassing. And if I bypass, I try to bypass like with a purpose. Either I'm shooting for a bridge or a town or some sort of crossing. I like encirclements, but I've also noticed if you're willing to take the casualties, sometimes you just want to go through. Like right there, I was hoping that the 8th could attack the French 12th motorized. They're just too well entrenched. It's not worth it, even though I would have some bonus for herb unit integrity and being the same division. Let's see, nothing there. Oh, they are entrenched, but I would love to be able to get some of those French tanks down. Let's see what we can do. Oh, and we get some of the B-1 tanks. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, the French, um, I know I'm going to mispronounce this, Char, B-1 bis, it, it was just an unholy nightmare of a tank. It was really bigger and stronger than about anything the Germans had. And it had a turret with a 37 millimeter cannon, but it had a hull gun with a 75. And you're not, at this point in the war in 1940, you're not going to see a lot of 75 millimeters. They weren't that common. This, this isn't the era of Panzer IVs and Shermans duking it out with 75s or better on both sides. This is where the Panzer III is still going to have a 50 millimeter that they have not um, changed the length of. And boy, that's a that's a different story for a different video. Because that uh, <laughs> they 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 did the Panzer III wrong. They really did by not giving it a longer barrel, higher velocity gun. Anyway, but the, the Char B1 Bis having a 75 and a 37 in a time when most didn't, and having really thick armor, the German tanks had some trouble. I mean, you had a 75 on the Panzer IV, Ausführung A through D, but those early models of the Panzer IV were infantry support. They had a short barrel, lower velocity 75. It was meant to support infantry. I mean, it could kill a tank, but with a low velocity shell from a short barrel, it was going to be much harder. And right here, I think I am going to play some cards because I'm going to use German infantry against French armor. And the reason is, I'm going to rely on artillery, air, and my anti-tank guns. And right there, eh, killed some armored cars, nothing big. I'm banking that my infantry units, with cards, with support, can win. And then my armored units should be able to flow through the gap. And there, for 300 casualties... I am able to destroy tanks, not just their infantry support, and we are pushing back French armor and French mechanized units. That is beautiful. I am so happy to see that. Right there, eh, we barely get the better of them, but we're, we're doing it. And right here, they have unsupported tanks in the open field, no infantry cover, no anti-air cover. And the Luftwaffe is going to go ham and just shred them. That is amazing. So, in Tank Doctrine, like, as an operational unit, Panzers should be together. And this game is all about that. And if you read about the Russians, like their Deep Battle Doctrine, Germans upgrading from Panzer Divisions to Panzer Corps to Panzer Groups than Panzer Armies operationally when you move a counter like it should be a division or bigger that said you will notice german panzer divisions always have infantry and support guns with them they always have recon units and then there's even a motorized infantry regiment with a couple motorized infantry battalions supporting the tank battalions but for them to just have these unsupported tanks uh, even though i can't remove the counter they are just dropping like flies. There's nothing they can do about it. It's just great to see. And once the Belgians capitulate, if I can keep 
pushing through the French, there's just going to be nothing they can do about it. They're going to have no units behind. I can beat their line in a straight fight. And when the Belgians are gone, then their line is going to have holes. And I can push through it with the infantry, and I can push around it with the tanks. And just lovely. Like this cavalry unit in the open field. That's a mistake. Lovely. Two regiments with some engineer support. Going to take a lot of casualties, lose some tanks, and I can't quite encircle them, but just from infantry attacks, almost, and they're almost close to shattering. I'm even considering trying to move these engineers up and see if I can threaten encirclement and make them react. But it's it's just lovely. I've been rereading um, Eric von Manstein's Lost Victories, talking about trying to do the Monstein plan. I think I said Schlieffen earlier in the video, but the Monstein plan. Um, and how hard he had to lobby for. And one of the things he lobbied for was getting second army and some extra infantry to support the tanks. And how they didn't just want extra tanks, so it wasn't like Guderian's 19th Corps by themselves in Army Group A. He knew they would need an infantry army to help hold the holes open and support the armor. And I'm glad he did because even though my tanks to the south are kind of bottlenecking, I love these infantry attacks and they're going pretty well for me. Not that one. You'll notice there I used core level artillery against army level artillery. And it didn't go very well. They were able to counter-battery me. But anything that hurts their readiness, even if it's going to hurt my morale more, that's fine. I have more units than them. And with the way the casualties have been in this game, it's only going to get more uneven. So right now at 2%, with the Dutch out, the Belgians at a quarter, the French higher than me, and the British hopefully soon taking some casualties... I'm not really worried, and eventually I can start getting more reckless than they can because I have more dudes than them. Not there yet, but okay, good old 15th. I'm looking, it looks like there are no units there in Give. I want to see if I can take it just with infantry, and I do. That's great. So I don't think going fully west is going to be the ticket i'm gonna see yeah get some artillery eh, not much i'd love this crossing 60 second let's see what you can do not a whole lot 300 men for 100 but they didn't have really enough movement to be decisive so get you there Oh, I got to start making real decisions soon. It's tough. I mean, this this campaign, it really, with the number of counters and things, you'll notice this turn, we're at about 28, almost 30 minutes, and it's taken a while. I want to boost. Let's do 5th. I'm going to boost 5th Panzer, and so I'm going to use 7th first and try to open up some zone of control. And then I'll see if I can get anything fun going with 5th. And right there, we've run into three British tank. It looks like brigades. At least the top one is a brigade. And, oh, 8th. I wanted you to go the other way. Frustrating. But right there, we are going to surround two recon brigades and a tank brigade for Britain. Don't even have to fight them. We get one step closer to the coast and... We are able to attack them. Now, I could secure that encirclement a little bit more, but I think 5th Panzer is going to push up. I can choose to either skirt around, or I can just straight up attack. I kind of like that position. Um, they're protected, so I don't think there's a way they can slice off my spearhead, but it gives me the option to keep going. It's the 15th. And I'm slowly getting close to that coast. I'm going to see an unsupported engineer unit. 
Not a ton of casualties, but I can push them back, making sure that they really can't do much. It opens up a hex for me. A little more zone of control. What I have to do is try to spring the second motorized and the rest of 8th Panzer free. I'm not happy with, as I went southwest near Sedan, hoping for a more historical outcome, just how tough the French have been here. Like, if you look, I'm really stacked up. Their units are getting pushed together. Like, I'm making progress, but... I don't think Guderian is going to be the guy, and I keep saying this every single turn. I just, I don't see how it's going to happen, and 16th Army here is so stacked up on itself, and the French are either behind rivers or in fortresses. It, it's just going to be a cluster, and those units moving up and making contact, they have like 30 to 40 action points. If I attack a fortress across a river with 30 or 40 action points, even if it's just an artillery unit, not going to do much for me. So I, I think I just have to move up my infantry and hope for sunnier days in the future. With the Panzers, I don't know if I want to attack across the river and be super reckless. I'm almost out of the woods. There's like four woods hexes across and i think if i get the french 10th corps and 18th corps out of the way then i can loop around what's left and that's that's really what i'm banking on it's just so disappointing i want those panzers in open country i want to have that feeling with both of my major panzer corps not just one i'll take i'll take one i still think we'll reach the core the coast will get a nice little Dunkirk, which, by the way, I do not plan on letting the Luftwaffe finish off. There will be there will be armor battles at Dunkirk. Don't you guys worry. I'm not going to make that same mistake. Again, reading, uh, or I should say rereading Monstein. Man, that's contentious, talking about the decision to not have the armor attack at Dunkirk, and whether it was political, like if Hitler did it to not make Britain mad and try to bring Britain to the peace table, or if it was a Goering thing and it was for prestige, and him wanting to show off the power of the Luftwaffe, or it was fears of using the tanks kind of in range of the RAF and where they would have some tougher terrain and be able to be attacked. I don't know, but just fascinating to see that from a very angry general's perspective. It's a really interesting book. I think I'm going to have a review about it coming up. Make sure you subscribe if you love the war game footage or the review so you don't miss stuff like that. It's very similar to Guderian's book in that it's a general from the losing side who's kind of trying to save face, preserve his legacy, talk about what his decisions would have been and how he thinks the war was lost from Germany's side and blocked. And so Dunkirk is one of his first big sticking points where he saw an opportunity to strike a much more decisive blow and thought that at the last minute the sword was turned and just hit with the wrong side. Just fascinating, but I'll do a proper review on that, just like I did with you, Darian. I think the, the literature, the work, is important enough. It deserves it. Right there, able to shatter more French units. With an engineer unit, I always love to see that. And it's going to be tough, but I think even in some of these forest hexes with my infantry superiority, I just have to start attacking. I think even in the forest, I have enough artillery. I can slowly whittle them down and then eventually the tanks will be able to break out. Like right there, only a hundred, you know, one car to support units and 200 casualties, but it's got to be like that. I also think my 18th Corps, they are going to be my bludgeon here. I'm going to mix them up a little bit for those of you who like uh, the nice borders 
and the beautiful cores all in a row. That's not this. 12th Army and 16th are so stacked up. But I'm going to make sure I attack with the same core. So I do get some of that delicious, delicious divisional bonus. And we can go from there. All right, you're in the woods. And you took some weapon losses. It says 85 readiness. That's that's rough. That unit still wants to stick it out. I'm surprised the 55th is going to do that. If I can find their colonial units, I can definitely pick on the colonial units. They are much more likely to give up earlier and shatter or flee, which rightly so. I mean, their colonial unit, they are fighting for France because they have to and not necessarily because they want to. You know, they're only going to have so much love for the French. I don't blame them, but as a German commander in the scenario, boy, I'm going to take advantage of that. All right, let's level bomb. They're in the heavy forest. There, we actually a 1,000 casualties. I lose some fighter aircraft, but that's what I want to see. If I can start cracking this line, I can shatter them. And without being able to check here and having perfect recon, I think off the top of my head, this should be the French 2nd Army with Hunziger. And yeah, they are not first-rate troops, and I think I can just grind them down. That's the plan. I'm going to use my infantry to bludgeon. I'm going to try to start getting the tanks around them as the infantry go through. And saving the tanks, at least unless it's a smart attack, save the tanks' integrity. I don't want their readiness and their operational integrity to get too low. I want them to be ready so when this cluster finally does clear up and the traffic through the Arden is not so nightmarish, then we can go from there. All right. What can I get? The whole 16th. Give me that divisional bonus. Wonderful. Casualties were only 200 to 700, but the unit does move. Unfortunately, they're starting to kind of hedgehog up in these forests that's bad for me this turn because i've already had to move into contact and burn some action points there and i've already had to make some attacks but what's good is next turn if they don't flee i'm gonna have full action points i'm gonna have entire armies caught up in there really the casualties are gonna be that one-sided but the unit just won't shatter that's fine You know what? I'm going to move them there. I don't know what I want to do yet. Let's do a follow-up. Lovely shatter. So, I overstack. I did lose some machine guns. Maybe it wasn't smart. You guys can tell me in the comments if you think I'm getting a little reckless here. But I will be honest. This is kind of frustration at this point. I mean, I'm not going to do that. That was a misclick. I'm not going to have 500 stack. Attack 100 stack. My casualties would be ridiculous it wouldn't even be that effective but i do want to get them out of here i'm ready to be done at sedan i'm starting to fall behind the historical timeline even though to the north it's getting a little better and being able to surround a bunch of british recon and tanks as i go to the sea that's pretty preferable but this right now ugly stuff don't like it Army level artillery and just nothing doing in the woods. But I have hit that unit with a lot of support. I'm going to go through. I have some wasted units. It's unfortunate with how much I've allowed myself to get stacked up. But I should be able to get a concentric. I'm going to try to use fresh units. You'll notice, like, because I mix and match units, I don't necessarily rotate units all the way off the line. But what I do is I go through and I rotate units as I attack. And so when I'm kind of mad clicking there, I'm checking the action points and the integrity. And the units that are under 100, I'm actually going to let them rest so they can recover back up to 100. They're either not getting supplies or I've been pushing them too much. And so 
I will rotate units in attacks, even if I don't have the most beautiful line right now as 12th armies and 16th armies are intertwined. Maybe the two armies love each other very much and they are in a lover's embrace. But when I break through, it's going to be oh so beautiful. I am not conceding yet. I know uh, June 8th is going to come up faster than I think. I have to hit the coast, then destroy the Dunkirk pocket, then turn on Paris. But kind of like the last scenario, you can get everything but, or you can get Paris and some other stuff. I think I am going to go for everything but. As much as I would like Paris, there's a mechanic that French units that do get captured and do get surrounded, you actually get a percentage of them back as the French player, and they come back as these straggler units, and those show up usually in the big cities, often in Paris, and the closer you get, the more you will get these straggler units, and it's just kind of a nightmare. So the problem with sending a lot of these units to retreat the way I have is that the weakened units will actually retreat into the woods protected by strong units. And so if I can get a little encirclement here, I would be happy. I am going to use my panzers here. I know it's heavy forest, but right there destroyed one, heavy retreat on the other. That slices off a good chunk of their infantry. I think... I'm kind of coming around. I might have to use the Panzers more. Again, not ideal, but right there to shatter a counter to basically weaken another counter to the point where it's useless. That's how it's got to be. So what do I want to do with you mobile units? Mobile units getting stacked up. They do have some field hexes, but I just don't have the action points. I'm going to have to... Spend an entire turn, get them up to the river, spend another turn like leaping over the river, being adjacent, and then if they run, that is, I'm just going to be playing catch up until I get to those fields, then my panzers can outrun them. So hopefully they either stand and fight if I can get across the rivers, if not, maybe them running wouldn't be the worst thing, come to think of it. I'll have to see how much my panzers can catch them and how soon I can get over the muse. Oh, frustrating game. But you know what? One of the cool things about this game, like because I do play this a lot and it is probably my favorite war game series, the game wouldn't be all fun if every single game went the same way, if it was always super easy. And so I'm, I'm glad it's keeping me on my toes. So, yeah, second Panzer, I really don't want to waste this movement, but I think what I've decided, they're not going to be able to get through the 71st with those rivers. Maybe if I get lucky? And the bombardment went well. I just don't know. I hate getting stacked up like this. <laughs> One little fortress division is just giving me such a headache it's crazy i'm hoping i can get the second panzer free i can get the 13th and 29th motorized free artillery here maybe it'll show me what openings i have i don't know i'm gonna move up my rear infantry while i'm thinking about it because i just need some time don't want to waste those Panzer units. And I'm going to be okay with any rush to the sea. But, you know, I love history. And it's bothering me more than it should that it's not Guderian and 19th Corps that are having any sort of luck right now. Any at all. But maybe in this alternate history, it was never going to be them. Because up there, 7th and 8th Panzer, they're doing okay. 2nd Motorized is helping. I think we'll get something out of it. But there's only so many French counters here. Like, they have a couple divisions, but I've been wearing them down. They've been consolidating. I already 
have some of first division pinched off there. I think eventually I'm going to just shatter this, but I got to kind of play it safe. Let's see if we can jump over the river. All right, there we go. So I do lose some men. I do lose some equipment, but, and see right there, they take cover behind two good counters, but I'm over that river. So second Panzer, if they don't move, it's going to be easier to get through. Yes, um, by Sedan, there are some fort hexes, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do is just start really attacking with the Panzers. It might use up some of their strength. It might use up some of their integrity, their fuel, their action points. But I don't really see another way around it. I think the 15th of May still being on the wrong side of the Muse for the most part. That's about as much time as I want to give it. So I'm going to move everything up as close as I can. And hopefully Guderian gets some cards next turn. And then I can... Yeah, I guess I'll use any fighter I can. Um, and with some cards, I can make something happen. 100 casualties, but for a fighter, you know, and it is what it is. I got no artillery, really. 100 men. I'm out of good air cover. I do have two motorized infantry regiments. They could attack, but it'd be two from one side attacking three French counters. I'm hoping their artillery regiment there for the 71st Division stays. And then I can really launch an attack on them. Break through, they'll retreat into that fortress hex. And then if I launch a follow-up, I get the fort. So here's hoping. I think I've been cautious enough this turn and prior turns. So I have set myself up. Finally, I think if they don't retreat to have a breakout just by going through them and trying to shatter them into letting me do what I want. Let's see if we can... No. I thought I'd roll the dice. Maybe I could get through. And sure enough, the attack was going to be successful. They were already taking casualties when we weren't. But between overstacking and not having like any sort of action points, it's just a no-go. But... Either they run or I smash them on the next turn. So I'm confident, and even though there's still some forest taxes and it feels like the Arden never ends, I will eventually outrun them. If they're going to try to pull away from me and outrun me, then they're going to lose because I have Panzers and they do not have nearly as many, at least not where they need them. I'm going to try to just pinch off some units here. Might be successful, might not. Um, just, I really want to start opening this up and I feel like eh, pretty good results there. I'm happy with that. They have the 18th, they have the fourth and then still more of the 18th. It's forest, it's city, it's stuff I don't like, but, um, if I can just start siphoning off a couple counters at a time, a regiment here, a regiment there, then the French are not going to survive, and uh, Hutzinger is not going to be able to keep up with what I'm doing. Putting up a good fight, I will say. They are holding where they need to hold, but I do have this nice little hole here, and I don't think they have much to the west. So if I can start getting like 3rd Infantry and a couple other infantry counters in there, I'm going to be good. And... If they try to pull backwards to react with 5th Panzer and 7th Panzer and 8th Panzer, if they start pulling back, then that's going to open up 19th Corps and Guderian's going to be able to start making moves. Now, what do I want to do with the rest of 3rd and 4th? I want to get across the deal, but I don't want to get bogged down in like horrific Marsh Hex fighting. And right there, they actually aren't guarding that bridge crossing fort hex seems crazy to me that you have marshes you have a bridge you have a river like that's a super defendable hex you could even put a garbage unit in that and at least make me have to waste action points attacking to get across it but you know what if they're going to give me freebies i'll take that 
and I could try to cross into the artillery regiment, but right there, I can start sending third panzer around. I think if I can cut off the first French motorized there, then they're going to have to pull back. And it looks like the British and the Belgians, while they have some screens up, I think um, possibly they're going to go back to like the Brussels line, which would be really nice for me. And so much entrenchment. So I'm going to go around. They actually are using screens, but they don't have enough units overall to block. And I'm going to create a nice little bridgehead with fourth and see what they do. If they start retreating, then I can just push forward. But I don't think I can contest those crossings. The mixture of the river, the entrenchment, and the marsh hex... That's just asking for a lot of panzers to not make it on the cross. So I'm going to eat the zone of control penalty for my action points. And I'm just going to get a bridgehead. This is a longer campaign. Like the advantage of this over Case White, you can kind of think ahead. You have until June 8th, and it's only one day per turn. So you're not under like immediate everything is awful scrutiny. And that's fine, because so far, I know the Dutch are out. I know the Belgians have lost a quarter of their dudes. The French, it'll be 10% after this turn. And the British just simply don't have that many, which is fine by me. Now I'm just going to go through, play some cards. But you guys will notice I did make a mistake. Um, Army Group B was doing so much cleanup and probing, I did actually forget to use some of my Luftwaffe attacks and in a longer campaign that actually wouldn't be a bad thing because it would give them time to rest like when we get to case blue you will not be able to effectively use the Luftwaffe every single turn just because their integrity will start dropping and their readiness will start dropping and they need a break but because I have such strong air superiority here it's just kind of an error on my part and I have to live with it Probably would have just had it weaken some British units up here. So it's not a huge deal. It's definitely not game breaking, but um, it does show that even with as much as I play this game, I do like lose units sometimes. And I didn't realize until after I'd already hit the turn, I started thinking, oh, did I do all my attacks? And no, I had like two dive bomber, two level bomber attacks I could have done. But other than that, I think it's going pretty well. I am kind of glad there's a little bit of adversity in Sedan is bogging down because it's giving me something to play towards and it's making it interesting for me and hopefully interesting for you guys too. If you enjoy the Decisive Campaign series, leave a like, comment, or subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay excited about history.